Good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Iran Savar Singh, Head of uh, Investor Relations at Sunshine Holdings. And on behalf of the team, I would like to welcome each and every one of you for our first quarter financial year at 523 earnings webinar. Uh, first, uh, uh, to go some ground rules, uh, uh, as I'd say some slide, uh, this will be recorded and data uploaded to our IR page so that everyone can go through uh, on a later date. Uh, initially, all participants will be muted uh, during the presentation, and once we conclude our presentation, uh, we aim to open it up for Q&A. So you can ask those questions by unmuting yourself, or you can uh, uh, post them on the chat box, and I will uh, coordinate them on the, those questions uh, to the respective uh, business sets. Uh, with that, I would like to uh, in, uh, introduce my team from Sunshine Holdings. Uh, I have Mr. Vish Govindan Sami, Group Managing Director, uh, Mr. Sham Satasivam, Managing Director for Healthcare and Consumer, Mr. Aruna Deepthi uh, Group CFO, uh, Shanta Bandara, who is the CEO of Pharma, Mr. T. Sandan, CEO of Sunshine Medical Devices, Mr. Infias Ali, CEO of Health Lab, Mr. Sanjeeva Sarnapal, CEO of Sunshine Exports, and Mr. Binesh Panangala, who is CEO of Butterworth Plantations PLC. With that, I would like to uh, hand it over uh, to Vish uh, to take you through the group performance and corporate highlights. Uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you very much for joining our, our quarterly uh, update. Uh, thanks, Iran, for those uh, housekeeping rules. So with that, um, the, we have two announcements to make for the quarter. One is the acquisition of the tea export business, which is uh, Sunshine Tea Limited, uh, which was uh, done in April. And now the figures are consolidated under our consumer sector with effect from 1st April 2022. Uh, we also did a share swap. As you know, uh, when we uh, joined hands with Agba Brothers, uh, there was a 28% stake given to them on the healthcare business. Uh, so we regained uh, full control of the healthcare segment by valuing uh, the Sunshine Holding shares at 60 per share and exchange uh, giving them some shares uh, to the tune of 8.8%. Uh, so that uh, share swap uh, also was held uh, during this time. Now moving on to group performance, uh, as you would have seen during our uh, release of this data uh, last Friday, uh, we ended up the quarter with 11.7 billion revenue, which is up 59.5% from the previous quarter, which includes uh, the Sunshine Tea business. So without the sunshine tea business, it's about 38.3%. Uh, so which uh, gives rise to a PAT of 1.6 billion, which is also up uh, year on year. And our ROE, uh, which is at 31.7, again, uh, higher from uh, last year. Uh, and I know the most important figure these days is to look at our leverage. Uh, we are leveraged at 24.8%, which includes uh, the debt that came along with Sunshine Tea compared with uh, FY22 when we were at 16.3%. Uh, looking at the highlights, uh, like I explained to you, 11.7 billion in revenue versus 7.3 billion in revenue. This has 33.8% uh, growth uh, without uh, the uh, Sunshine Tea business. And with the Sunshine Tea business, it's a 59 and a half percent uh, growth. Uh, we have uh, dropped our uh, margin, the fat mar uh, GP margin uh, marginally uh, due to two reasons. Uh, one, uh, the agribusiness uh, having uh, a reduction due to uh, the feed cost that the uh, our dairy business has experienced uh, and also increase in costs in our agribusiness but uh, also the export business uh, has a lesser uh, GP margin than our other uh, businesses. So overall, there's a GP margin 
drop and we have a very small uh, drop in uh, PAT uh, by 51 basis points uh, due to the uh, fat decreasing due to the lots of the challenges uh, which many businesses have faced uh, in the consumer and agri sectors. So that's the uh, overall highlights. And now you will hear from each one of our CEOs uh, on the individual uh, segments. Thanks, uh, Vish. I think uh, let's move on to the healthcare uh, briefs, uh, healthcare sector brief. I think I would like to invite Shanta to take this on and uh, take this forward. Shanta. Thank you, Hiran. Uh, good evening, uh, everyone. I would like to first take you through uh, some of the uh, segmental analysis uh, on uh, our healthcare sector. Our revenue split uh, in the sector, our, our uh, pharma business is the largest contributor uh, in our healthcare sector, which contributes to about 73% of the sector. Medical devices contributes to about 16%. Our retail health guard chain contributes to about 9%. And the pharma manufacturing contributes uh, around 2%. And if you look at the asset split, the asset base is being allocated, uh, I would largely say the similar way in terms of revenue, except for pharma manufacturing is more intense in terms of uh, plant uh, and machinery. Therefore, 9% uh, is a little bit higher than the revenue contribution that you see in terms of the asset split. Uh, however, the agency business uh, in terms of pharma and distribution Asset allocation is almost the same as the revenue contribution of 73%. And medical devices, there is a 13% uh, allocation in terms of asset. And for retail business, about 5%. So that uh, I, I would say that uh, would give you a fair understanding of our split in terms of revenue and uh, our asset base uh, in terms of allocation in the sector. And let me take you through the performance of the sector. Uh, the sector reported uh, almost a 46% increase in our revenues. This is mainly contributing from the price increases that was granted by the uh, NMRA or the regulator. Given that largely the pharma business and the medical devices business is contributing in the healthcare sector, both the businesses uh, got certain amount of price increases largely in the pharma where the the government granted due to the devaluation of uh, rupee against dollar, there were uh, several uh, price increases which were granted during the latter part of March and or, or also in April in, in, in two segments. So therefore, the figures that you see are actually inbuilt in terms of the price increases that we were able to um, increase certain amount of products. Uh, in, in connection with the dollar increase that we went through. Given that the pharma and medical devices businesses are uh, fully import-based, uh, the, these increases were vital for the business. This also gave a correction to a great extent, extent in terms of our GP, where all of the year, uh, in the previous year, so we were suffering certain amount of exchange losses. And also in March, which we were able to uh, secure during the quarter one in terms of price increases, where uh, pharma specifically is a price controlled or a controlled uh, industry from the regulator. This, this gave us a fairly a good result here. You see as EBIT 85% increase is mainly coming from our GP increase during the quarter. And also the cost uh, saving measures that we took with the uh, economic downturn that we experience in the business as well, uh, which has impacted certain areas uh, in the business, we were able to somewhat uh, save uh, cost uh, during the quarter. Uh, with that, uh, the PAT reported is uh, around almost 60% uh, increase against the uh, previous year, same quarter, and with, with a margin of 7.4%. And uh, uh, the uh, the MRP increases uh, overall, if, if you look at the increases, uh, we had 29%, uh, 20%, uh, 20%, 20%. So almost about 75% uh, uh, plus increases were granted uh, for the pharma business. Moving on from the overall performance, uh, just a quick snapshot on our market share and how we have been faring in the market. 
I'm, I'm very happy to say that the pharma business largely uh, was able to keep up with the, uh, the growth. And uh, we have been growing as the fastest growing uh, company in the pharma industry for the last uh, almost two and a half years. Uh, since we were able to keep up with our growth against our uh, main two competitors and also against the overall industry. So therefore, we have been maintaining the growth uh, throughout and we have been gradually growing our market share in the industry. Moving on from this slide to the next where I spoke about earlier, if you look at the two, the last uh, financial year and the quarter one, the the industry, the farm, mainly the pharma industry, got, uh, was granted only a nine percent price increase during August uh, two thousand twenty-one. The whole of last year, the business uh, was eroding the GP margins. However, in the in the month of March, uh, in the latter part of the last financial year, when the uh, from eighth of March to be exact, we saw the dollar increase uh, was uh, steep against the rupee with that the price increases were granted so therefore anything which was at indexed at 100 we see at 197 in the industry level so this is how uh, the dollar against rupee has impacted the pharma business throughout the last uh, almost about uh, uh, 15 months that you see uh, on the graph so with that update i would like to hand over to sandan who will take you through the medical devices, some of the highlights. Sandan, over to you. Uh, thank you, Shanta. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. So let me take you through some of the market indicators. And similar to what my colleague Shanta mentioned, uh, we saw ups and downs in movements of the key indicators. And in this graph, as you can see, we saw the hospital occupancy. Last year, first quarter, which was affected by the Delta variant, we saw it's coming down, but towards the first quarter, we saw the, the usage or the utilization of the hospital occupancy coming down. We saw all the lab tests, which is another indicator for medical devices business. We saw even in the government and the private sector, the footfall of lab tests coming down. Operating theater utilization was relatively high, but that too, we saw a drop. This is largely due to the inflation due to the fuel crisis, which contributed towards the drop. But in spite of these market conditions, I'm happy to note the medical devices business grew the value by 40% in spite of some of the hospitals uh, purchasing very high quantity in the first quarter, anticipating a price increase with the dollar prices going up. We saw a large amount of purchases made in the month of April, which also contributed towards the growth. As mentioned, the hospitals were piling up the stocks and the growth were driven largely due to the price increase. Moving on to the manufacturing segment of the Sunshine Healthcare. Here, I would like to say we saw a 13% year-on-year drop, but this is largely due to the government orders not being received in the first quarter. So it will be a timing issue. We, we, we have got the orders now, but we could not invoice in the first quarter because of the government orders coming late. And we also noticed the GP margins contracted because the salbutamol and the beclomethasone uh, SKUs have been price controlled and a price control in a rupee depreciated market, we saw the GPs coming down. But the good news is the Sunshine Healthcare has two manufacturing arm, Lena Manufacturing and the Lena Spiro. Lena Spiro, which is the only metered dose inhaler manufacturer in Sri Lanka, which got commissioned last year, got its first order. We have received the first government order for the meter dose inhalers for six SKUs. And this is something we'll be manufacturing and supplying the government this year, which will take the manufacturing segment to the next level. So these are some of the updates from the medical devices and the Lina Pharma manufacturing. Let me now hand over to my colleague Infias to take you through the health guard retail. Over to you, Infias. Uh, thank you, Sandan. Good evening, everybody. So uh, let me give you a quick update on uh, health guard's performance. So uh, Q1 for health guard uh, saw a very disruptive uh, quarter, uh, and uh, which resulted in a significant uh, drop in footfall across the chain. 
uh, mainly uh, in, uh, main catalyst for that would, would be the fuel shortage that impacted the significant loss in footfall other than the uh, economic and the political unrest. So uh, the second challenge we faced in the chain was the availability challenges due to supply chain disruptions and import challenges. So this actually led to us having a, a drop in uh, volumes, but overall in terms of revenue due to the price increases the industry has seen, our overall uh, revenue was uh, flat. Uh, the second uh, big change we saw in the mar uh, we saw within the chain was that our retail mix, that, that means our pharma and wellness portfolio mix significantly changed uh, due to the change in consumer habit. Uh, in Q4, we saw a lot more COVID related wellness purchases and the perception of COVID was uh, significantly higher in the minds of uh, consumers. This changed rapidly uh, in Q1 where we saw uh, consumers focus on uh, prioritizing uh, essentials and moving primarily to uh, pharma related expenses. Uh, typically our pharma wellness uh, split stood at 45% each. Uh, this shifted signif significantly and our wellness uh, split uh, moved considerably towards uh, 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 the pharma side with more than 60% uh, of our consumers uh, purchasing pharma in, in, in relation to the revenue. Uh, despite the challenges, uh, we continue to have good loyalty engagement. We saw our our loyalty customers continue to engage and come into the uh, come into the store. Uh, so that's a positive sign. Uh, the business itself undertook uh, several initiatives to ensure long-term sustainability. Uh, despite our challenges, we did look at uh, uh, managing and improving our. Uh, uh, cash flows and uh, managing our optimizing our cost uh, in the in, for the long term so overall while the business had some challenges uh, we did take a lot of measures to ensure that uh, the business uh, is uh, optimized for long term sustainability i'll now hand it over to uh, sham to talk about the consumer business thank you Thanks, uh, Infinch, and good evening to all of you. Thank you for being here. Uh, let me take you through Sunshine Consumer Business. Uh, as our Group Managing Director uh, communicated at the beginning, uh, a large acquisition uh, at the very start of the year in the consumer business with the export Sunshine Tea business being added on. So uh, Sunshine Consumer as a segment now covers uh, domestic, both tea and confectionery, uh, the consumer brands, as well as our export business, which is, as you can see from the revenue split, nearly 50% uh, of the business and the assets. Uh, and therefore a lot of uh, change in our mix uh, in our consumer sector, uh, in terms of both uh, businesses, uh, both domestic as well as export, uh, and I'll take you through some of the details of the export business uh, as we move beyond. Let me start with the overall sector results. Uh, as you, Of course, with the acquisition, there has been significant growth, nearly 100%, uh, from 1.8 billion last year, same quarter, to nearly 4 billion this quarter. Uh, I've given you the breakup of the export contribution, which is nearly 1.8 uh, 1.9 billion, about $5 million was exported by this business during the first quarter. Um, we, uh, excluding uh, this acquisition, uh, underlying growth was flat, broadly flat in terms of at 7%, uh, driven by price increases we had to take in tea and confectionery, but significant volume contractions, which I will go into. Um, there was significant support for, for the margins in the first quarter due to the tea export business uh, having significant gains. Um, a lot of it to do with exchange gains. Uh, and again, we'll take you through that. So coming into the, the consumer brands, which we sell domestically, you can see that we had significant volume degrowth across both tea and confectionery while we had large price growth. Uh, the largest price growth, of course, was in our confectionery. Uh, as we moved beyond price points of, say, two rupees to 
to five and ten rupees per unit. I'm talking about uh, toffees, can confectionery, etc. Uh, across both sectors, uh, both tea and confectionery, what we saw was uh, consumer sentiment uh, for purchasing was low. Affordability uh, challenges kicking in. Uh, of course, month of June uh, was quite disrupted uh, with in terms of transport disruption. Therefore, availability and product purchase was disrupted. Uh, our concern would be in terms of our tea business uh, to see that sort of volume uh, degrowth. And we think it's to do with prices. I mean, we were the first in the market. We're the market leader at 50% plus market share. So we had to lead the market with the price corrections. Um, so we think there was some significant impact because of that. Um, moving on. You can see what, here what's happened to the uh, raw material costs. So for our packaged consumer tea business, we buy at the tea auctions. You can see the significant sort of increase uh, since March uh, at the tea auction prices. There was a dip uh, into June, but it's shot back up into July. Um, so it's in this volatility that we have to set consumer prices for our brands. Uh, and we've had to also take a steep uh, increase. Uh, in the pricing to an index of about 146. Broadly, quarter, every quarter we sell a million and a half to 1.3 million kilos. We've had uh, a drop, as I said, in volume in first quarter, a mix of consumer adjustment to prices, but also I think supply disruptions. Um, our product uh, uh, reaches directly through our distributors, nearly 40,000 outlets, and thereafter indirectly to, an, uh, to a total of 100,000 outlets all of which is impacted across the uh, domestic consumer business uh, with the disruption to distributor activities as well as consumer you know, footfall uh, into groceries. Moving on, here you get a, se a sense of the market share. Broadly across the last year, we've maintained uh, our 50 plus uh, market share uh, across uh, all three brands, uh, whatever uh, uh, Tay being our largest brand, followed by Rankahata and then Zesta. Uh, as you can see, uh, Unilever, uh, who's our largest competitor, is around 20 to 25 percent, uh, and then uh, all the others. Um, we think this will broadly hold uh, because the issues that have been faced have been industry wide in terms of tea auction prices being high. Therefore, MRPs for all branded teas have gone up, as well as supply distribution uh, disruptions. There will be some gains by regional players, uh, as you can see the sort of other uh, increasing. I think that's something uh, that will happen in, in with high prices. Uh, moving on to confectionery. Now, this is our dainty uh, business that we acquired two years ago, where this has been well integrated. The company's amalgamated uh, into Sunshine Consumer now. Um, here, sharp increases. Sugar prices have gone, have nearly doubled uh, in the year, uh, in the last 12 months, from an index of 100 to nearly 200. Uh, and this is a base ingredient into uh, all of our confectionery. Therefore, our prices have had to increase. But the prices here, uh, you know, jump uh, in, in big step jumps because we move beyond that two rupee per toffee to, you know, three, and then you really can't do four. You, you end up going to five rupees and then five to maybe seven, but broadly to 10 rupees. So that's what's happened across you know, uh, SKUs. And uh, so that should give us some room for, for some further headroom to deal with sugar prices, which continue to be on the But volumes have been impacted because of, uh, again, same ST, mix of affordability and availability. Uh, we think availability uh, was quite a challenge uh, through the last six to eight weeks, June and July. Uh, last week of July was better, but during the quarter, I think there was availability challenges uh, as well as pricing. Moving on to our market shares here. Again, we've been able to hold market shares at about 30%. Uh, the market leader is Perfetti at about 30-35%. Uh, and then, you know, uh, Sunshine Consumer, the dainty brands at about 30%. Um, we need... I mean, our ambition is to continue to build uh, on a market share and, you know, uh, by creating more uh, product price points as well as availability, um, but not, no significant change uh, in the market share mix uh, among the top three companies here. 
Moving on to our export business, which is Sunshine Tea. This business primarily exports uh, uh, value added teas to uh, customers, uh, and then they've had long standing customers. Primarily, here the focus is on value added teas and not bulk. So, volumes are broadly at about a million, million point two kilos a quarter. Uh, and the focus again has been on, you know, uh, price per kg, uh, where really it's a question of uh, can we continue to increase uh, margins for us as we export more value added product. The market has been positive in the sense that there has been growth in dollar revenues for this business, uh, even though volumes have contracted, there has been growth in export dollars for the business. Uh, we hope to continue the same. Uh, of course, the Sri Lanka tea auction pricing has been very high, as you saw before, which will constrain our ability to export to quite a few price sensitive markets. Uh, so uh, it will be a challenge into the future, but we've been able to hold broadly uh, through the quarter. Some issues, some disruptions, uh, just economic disruptions uh, per se uh, domestically uh, have played a part, but Broadly, we see uh, this continuing uh, to do well uh, into the future. Let me now move you on to our agribusiness our group, uh, the third part of our sector in the group. CEO Binesh would take you through this. Uh, thank you, Sham. Uh, good evening to everybody. Uh, I will move on to uh, the uh, to look at the revenue split. Uh, basically, uh, the palm oil is the key uh, major. Uh, area of uh, revenue, uh, which is 88%. Uh, and uh, uh, the other sector is the dairy sector, which is uh, comprised into 12%. Uh, when it comes to the total assets plate, uh, again, uh, the dairy has a higher value than the uh, revenue, uh, which is 28% uh, of our assets are dairy and also the palm oil, uh, 72%. Uh, when you look at it in the, in the, uh, the first quarter, it has been a uh, challenging quarter for the restructure uh, in terms of the volume uh, as well as the escalating cost. Uh, so uh, when it comes to the revenue, uh, the revenue for the first quarter 2023, 1.8 uh, billion uh, versus last year 1.4 billion, which is a 31.9 percent increase. Uh, of this split, uh, the palm oil uh, grew by 32 percent and dairy revenue increased by uh, 34 uh, percent. At the same time, the EBIT, uh, the contraction of 3.5 percent, uh, mainly coming from the increase in uh, cost of sales uh, in both the uh, sector, which is WPL, uh, the palm oil, as well as the uh, dairy. Uh, as a result, our EBIT margins have been lower uh, and contracted compared to the last year. Uh, in terms of the profitability of the dairy, I have been a challenge and it has been adversely affected mainly because the feed cost increase uh, in proportionate to the price uh, milk price increase. Uh, so business recorded a loss during the first quarter as opposed to last year uh, profit. Uh, so we have taken corrective measures to uh, get back to uh, the feed availability and also to uh, see that uh, the best usage of feed uh, at this point in time. So moving on, uh, uh, in the meantime, the palm oil prices have been maintaining in the last quarter or Q4, uh, have been uh, maintaining at high level in the world market, uh, which has come down during the month of June, July, the world market price have halved uh, from what it used to be. Uh, so we have seen a dip in it and uh, it is stabilized around 4,000 ringgit in the world market. Uh, when it comes to again with the certain policies of the uh, policies, what we have seen, uh, especially the, the agri policy and non availability of fertilizer during uh, the last one to one and a half years, uh, have seen a crop drop uh, from uh, Q1 of 22 uh, to uh, 2023. Uh, the similarly, this is uh, having an effect on the other crops as well, which is the feed material for uh, the farm. I'll move on uh, to the dairy. Uh, the dairy price, the good side of it is the dairy uh, milk prices have been on the increase, uh, which we started around 128, has moved up to now 
uh, almost uh, 220 rupees, uh, so which is a good side of it. But in the meantime, for the reasons which I mentioned, uh, the uh, availability of feed as well as the prices of the feed, uh, also the nutritious feed not available in the market had uh, issue on uh, getting our sales milk volumes in the uh, Q1. Uh, so this had uh, been uh, compared to the last quarter, this had been the lowest. Uh, but we have taken measures to get this corrected uh, in the coming uh, quarter, which we have seen an improvement uh, as of now. I'll move on to the, now I'll hand over to uh, uh, Hiran uh, to take you through on the Q&A. Thanks, uh, Hello. Hi. Thanks, Vinesh, and uh, all the business leaders for that in-depth uh, review of the business and the quarter uh, that we just uh, finished. Uh, now, I would like to open it up for Q&A. As I mentioned earlier, you can ask yourself and ask questions or you can use box. Uh, so, over to you guys. Kiran, this is Asanka from Linear. Can you hear me? Hi, Asanka. Go ahead. Yes. A couple of questions, Kiran. On the confectionery side, can you give us a sense of how the volumes are trending as of now? Sure, yeah, I'll take that. Uh, no, so it, I think confectionery has been, uh, I mean, you're talking about Q2, I presume. It's been positive, yes. uh, positive. Right. I think uh, as there's more, uh, as we create more availability, uh, as things on supply has been better managed with fuel availability, uh, things are more positive uh, into second quarter. Well, when you say well, positive, Sham, are the volumes closer to the normal levels? I know you guys haven't had a normal quarter for quite a while because of COVID as well, but um, how would you benchmark it as to what to consider normal? I, I think uh, we saw a dip from quarter four last year into quarter one this year. We see quarter two more towards re returning back to quarter four levels. Noted. Uh, thanks, Sean. Moving on to the pharma segment, I noticed the fact that while there has been substantial price increases on both the gasseted and the non-gasseted categories, none of that have actually kept up with the currency depreciation. The margin improvement that you have seen in the quarter, why has that happened? Is it because of um, all the inventories? Is that margin sustainable? Uh, how do you see that margins of that segment evolving? Yes, uh, I'm, I, I would like to answer that. Um, first of all, uh, the margins are not at all sustainable. There are, there are issues with regard to the margins being the same, but we see immediately quarter one being better compared to the previous whole of last year uh, as i took you through that indexing yes the whole of last year we got only one price increase if you can remember the previous year to two, 2021 uh, 22 uh, the dollar was at 180 185 and slowly came up to 200 then the with the intervention of the central bank it was 203 for a, for a quite a quite a stint. Still from 185 to 203, we got a we got a 9% only. So therefore, all of last year we were we were at a lower margin comparatively. And most of the uh, industry players were at a lower margin. And with March depreciation, and we were lobbying through the chamber and we we were granted three price increases immediately, which has taken up to a a better margin in the quarter one compared to the to all of last year. So therefore, immediately you see some improvement, which is again still the dollar, uh, although it's stable, is at around three sixty eight to three seventy, whereas the price increases were not up to that level. 
the price increases i would say came to around 350 closer to 350 so therefore still we are not at the optimal margin the business should be and also risk of losing further i hope i uh, addressed your question i think so i mean just to uh, sum up what you mean is that if the government follows us uh, um, follows um, uh, prudent policies the margin should improve over a time but at this point in time you are seeing further downside uh, you are seeing downside to uh, what you reported in the last quarter is it yes correct correct right. okay. correct uh, i have one last question i think presumably this will go to shyam on the sunshine tea export business so about half of the profit seems to have come from the currency gain can you give us a sense as to what is the kind of profitability level in a business as usual environment you will expect from that uh, segment? Sure. So broadly, I think the X for X gain um, uh, uh, sort of EBIT in what you can see in quarter one would be the baseline for the export business. Uh, and uh, we hope to improve on it further, but that would be the baseline. Uh, so they've had a reasonable quarter, first quarter, even minus the foreign exchange gain. Thanks a lot, Shyam. Uh, thanks, Ilan. Thanks, Lanka. Uh, I'll move on to some questions on the chat. Uh, I think uh, Shalini has some questions on the active sector for Binesh. The first question is, uh, will Bata margins continue to remain lower, similar to the last quarter, with stabilization on global prices? Any plans on... Uh, replantation. Yeah, I'll take the first question, which is uh, uh, it will contract uh, the the margins uh, will be maintained at the same levels or lower uh, when it comes to Q2 uh, for the reason the global pri uh, market price have been coming down. Uh, so that will maintain at the same levels or it will be lower. Uh, so in terms of the replanting, still uh, the ban on uh, palm oil uh, is uh, on. And uh, once, if the government revoke, uh, that the replanting can be done. So, hope I answered those two questions. Thanks, Vinesh. And another one on uh, Agri. Uh, when do you expect Vata to utilize maize from the new cultivation? Uh, already, we have uh, started growing in some parts uh, based on the uh, rain fed uh, conditions. So, therefore, that volumes uh, with the immediately will be lower. But majority of it will come in the uh, Q4. So we will do at uh, two seasons and the major season will come from starting from October and the harvest will begin uh, in uh, early part of January or uh, uh, second half of January. Thanks, Vinesh. Uh, I think uh, moving on, I think I have one question from uh, Trisha uh, on how electricity tariff hike uh, has impacted the business. I think Risha, we will need some time because it's, uh, it was announced uh, in the afternoon. Uh, so I think let us uh, work through and see the impact and come back to you on that. Uh, any other question? Okay. Uh, we have one from uh, Uchi. Uh, how are you managing the import requirements for your consumer and healthcare businesses? The effects issue and import restrictions do not seem to be impacting you yet. Aruna will ask. Uh, thank you. Thank you for the question. Uh, actually, there is an impact in the availability in terms of the forex uh, US dollars, but we manage it uh, given the situation pharmaceutical and medical devices are in the essential category, but it's on the priority base. We manage it. Well. Thanks, Aruna. Uh, I think we have a question from uh, Kushan. What are the countries that the export businesses mainly cater to? Uh, Sanjeeva, do you want to take that? Or Shah? Sanjeev? Yeah, let's Sanjeev. Go ahead, Sanjeev. Yeah, so main uh, countries that we do export is the Far East, which is uh, China uh, and Japan. Uh, also in client-owned brands, we do to uh, the Middle East, which is Iran. Uh, 
uh, and also to US and Canada. So those are the big markets, uh, followed by, uh, of course, UK, uh, which is one of our client brand uh, owners main market. Uh, thanks, uh, Sanjeev. While we have you on video, uh, there's another question on Sunshine Tea. Uh, yeah. Does Sunshine Tea have a seasonal revenue? Uh, uh, yes. Uh, generally, the third quarter uh, and fourth quarter are the two quarters that generally have a higher uh, export revenue. Uh, but saying that with the current uh, situations, uh, we have seen a variance. Uh, especially in the fourth quarter last year where there was a dip. But in general, it is the third and fourth quarter that we see an increase. Thanks, uh, Sandeva. Uh, yeah. I think we have a question. I think we can answer this. Uh, the question is, uh, what is the new president have to inquire? Uh, have, have you inquired on the palm oil ban status of it? Yeah, uh, thank you for the question. Uh, we didn't think it was appropriate at this point, given all the other issues the new president has on his plate, uh, that he will be able to answer that question. Uh, but we have been actively lobbying uh, with various uh, activities uh, also, and there is a court case pending uh, at the Supreme Court uh, against the gasset that was issued on the ban of palm oil. Uh, so we are hoping that uh, when that case is taken up, we will have a, a proper verdict and then we can begin uh, the planting of palm oil. I think uh, that's a related question on palm oil. Any chance of uh, probably any chance of the government allowing new planting on palm oil? I think that we should answer. The second part of the question is what are the age analysis of the palm cultivation? Uh, so when will be the next replanting necessary? Yeah, so uh, uh, maybe Binesh should answer this question, but some of it is competitive data. So we have to be careful on how we discuss that. Binesh, on the age, uh, is the planting necessary? Our plantations are uh, relatively younger. We have about uh, nearly about 50% of our palms are young palms. Uh, apart from that, we have a, 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 a relative a small amount which has to be done uh, immediate replanting. So that need to be done with immediate effect and actually it is overdue. So that has to be uh, that replanting has to is ongoing, uh, which is uh, which have been stopped at this point in time. Uh, thanks, Minister. By the way, I have you here. Uh, that's another question from Shalini. Uh, what sort of measures do you look at to reduce feed cost in addition to cultivation of maize? Uh, reduction of feed cost is uh, it's two prong. One is that uh, uh, first of all we will get the productivity from the feed what is available, and also quality of the feed uh, what we are getting also is uh, important. So these are one of the other areas. Uh, then right balance of uh, feed uh, for the uh, cattle is also been uh, really looked at on a daily basis and the different categories, et cetera. So these are the areas that we will uh, try to reduce on the uh, feed cost, uh, apart from the basic uh, stuff of uh, getting uh, a right uh, uh, amount, the, the volumes as well as the, the prices from our uh, sellers. Thanks, uh, Vinesh. I think uh, moving on to uh, a question on pharma, I think Shant or Shant can weigh in on this from questions on the uh, Is the is this the upper limit you see for farmer price, price increase by the NMRA based on the current conditions? Or, there, or is there any other further increase being called for? Uh, I will answer that. Um, uh, actually, as I was uh, answering the earlier uh, gentleman, uh, the, the, the pricing is around 350 uh, or so a, a dollar, whereas the um, uh, right now, the dollar is averaging around 368 to 370. Given the uh, given the conditions and the uh, the economic uh, uh, situation in the country and the uh, disposable income, uh, immediately there may not be a price increase coming through. But there is a gap for the industry overall that uh, we are suffering and we are stomaching that behalf of the patients, I suppose. Uh, 
because of the overall uh, difficulties that everybody is going through. So right now, unless they let the dollar uh, go out again at these levels, uh, if the dollar goes to 400, I think uh, nobody can stop uh, import products going up, not only medicine, that uh, for that matter, any product. Uh, right now, we see some stability in this and uh, uh, hopefully we can hold the prices with the dollar being held up. Thanks, uh, Shanta. Uh, moving on to the next question, uh, I think, uh, I think uh, for Sanjeev, uh, which uh, elevation is normally exported? Uh, is there a weightage to a specific elevation or uh, can you give some color on that? Yeah, so for Sunshine Exports, it's evenly uh, divided where we have about 50-50 uh, of low-grown teas exported, well as high-grown teas uh, in the same level. So it's evenly distributed. Thanks, uh, Sanjeev. I think I'll take a few more questions on palm oil. I think only as asked is replanting a lot. So currently, as we explained, uh, it's uh, not allowed yet. And uh, yeah, uh, the Palm Oil Association as a body is uh, uh, campaigning for it. And currently, it's still not allowed. Uh, then moving on to the question from Trisha. How soon will you be expecting an improvement in palm oil volumes, given that fertilizer is slowly coming into the market? I think Vinesh might be able to take on that. Uh, yes, I think uh, the palm oil volume from the Q1, uh, there is increase uh, at the moment. Uh, there is the, uh, these two prong. The Q1 uh, have been lower. One is the weather as well as the uh, reduction in the fertilizer. But uh, now the weather is uh, uh, all right uh, as of now. So the Q2, the, the, the volume should improve better than the Q1. Uh, but however, the fertilizer impact uh, will take some time to get it corrected. Thanks, Sir Dinesh. I think moving on to uh, some questions on health guard. Uh, Kushan has asked uh, how many health guard pharmacies are active now? Uh, expectation on opening and closing of health guard pharmacies going forward. Thanks for the question. So currently we have 13 stores uh, currently operating in the Colombo and Greater Colombo uh, suburb area. We have no plans of opening any new stores for the coming quarter, considering the current situation. And we have no plans for closing uh, any outlets uh, as well. Uh, Inti, again on uh, the health guard operation, that's another question from JBS. Have you negotiated downward venture prices on the pharmacies given the lot of space in the market? How much of a save? Rental prices, yes, definitely. Uh, we are negotiating with each of our landlords uh, on rental prices. Uh, so it's been a quarter on quarter negotiation. Nobody wants to really go for annual uh, rental uh, uh, reductions, but on a quarterly basis, we have been able to uh, have uh, some reprieve on rental reductions. Thanks, uh, uh, one more for Binesh. Uh, from Chan, is there a usual seasonality when it comes to palm oil production? Uh, yes, uh, so it is like uh, every quarter it has a different view. Normally the first two, uh, two quarters, uh, the crop is high, uh, but when it comes to the Q4 is uh, lower. So basically that is uh, from January to uh, March, like the crop is low. So this is the normal uh, pattern uh, in uh, uh, oil palm, uh, the palm oil crop. Thanks, Vinesh. I think uh, we have a bit more time. Uh, if anybody has more questions, we are happy to answer. Okay, I think, uh, I think that's it uh, in terms of questions. So I think it's time for us to wrap up uh, this uh, session. Uh, on behalf of the Sunshine team, I would like to thank uh, everybody who uh, actively participated and engaged with us to get better clarity on our on key results. So, hope to see all of you in our second quarter webinar uh, in a few months' time. Have a good day uh, and stay safe. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.